The Greenway family actually showing real life Despite social media feeding us who that real hype We just some real guys trying to give some high definition To reality family acrobatically juggling life Small for these tries to avoid eternal casualty trust It ain't easy, but teamwork make the dream work It's me, Ella, Hesse, Hosanna, Harper and Halle uh, And I ain't forget that has a ride join the family Hello guys, welcome back to the Grimwag family channel and as you can see today I'm not here on the sofa with my husband I'm here on the sofa with my dad hi dad good morning <laughs> of course this is my dad and he's known me all my life but it's not very often these days dad that we actually sit down on the sofa and chat is it unfortunately <laughs> Any time I run in you're like are you stopping are you stopping dying yeah my goodness <laughs> I have to check yes because oftentimes I'm like, I'm just coming to pick something up. I'm just quickly dropping something. You guys know what my life is like. It's like, zzz, 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 zzz. so it's nice to be sitting on the sofa, having a quick talk with my dad. It's a complete pleasure. Thank you, dad. Obviously I love my dad and it's a bit odd the way I feel sitting here with him because you almost feel a bit, for me, I almost feel a bit nervous like I'm sitting next to my husband or my boyfriend or something because it's my dad. And I guess daughters would kind of understand that kind of feeling because your dad is, such a big figure in your life and I'm like oh he's such a special person because obviously it was Father's Day yesterday so I thought it would be a nice idea you obviously heard Tim talking on our previous video about his experience of being a dad and it was obviously related to race but here I just thought I would come and speak to my dad and get his thoughts on fatherhood as a whole but before we do I just have a little gift you probably know what it is already but I have a little gift that I prepared for yesterday so I'm just gonna get it <laughs> Fresh from the oven. What is this? Yesterday I know, evening. I know this is going to be something to look forward to because <laughs> yeah. I know these cakes. Yes. What are you there trying to do go. to me? What is going to happen to me? <laughs> and it's only for you. <laughs> so if you have to freeze some, it's that's only fine. for me. It's only for you. Oh my goodness, I'll still be eating this next year. <laughs> it's only for me. Um, yeah, Dad has come to seem to like my cakes, which is lovely. I like it when people like my cooking, especially when my dad loves my cooking. I'm like, absolutely. yay! Absolutely. So, yeah, and then Thank you so much, like, sweetheart. Mm. I usually do this. cupcakes, but I thought I'd do a whole cake. Should I put this down there? Yeah, you can just put it there, and I gave you a card as well. The card was a bit of a rush, but I thought it was no funny. Worries. No worries, thank you very much. Like, yeah, you can open it now. Open <laughs> my card now. Yes. Now, what's on my card? It says, Dad, you must be the most amazing dad in the world, really. <laughs> so, Dad, uh, it's the only way you could have had such an amazing... <laughs> He Thank must so be. Much. Apparently, Andre, because he, Dad saw my brother Andre yesterday, and apparently he gave Dad. These these two are <laughs> out of the same pod because basically Andre's card was saying like, go a long thing about our oh, such amazing Dad and your <laughs> unique and special. But then of course you must have been because you had such a unique, special, and amazing son. There you go. Unbelievable. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> you, you like. The but I love it completely. It. I love it yes. completely. <laughs> I love them completely, and um, uh, it's. I'm so proud that I have these children. And who wouldn't be proud if you had a daughter like this? Look at this beautiful, lovely woman now. She was my daughter, but do you know she's been old since she's been young? Oh. My goodness. Why could, do you say that? Well, I'm always going to recall to mind. Remember that um, catering event we did for Mum? To be honest, I think it was either her 41st or her 39th, because I remember it wasn't one of the like round numbers. Oh, so I was about nine and we did a surprise birthday party for my mum, which I can't remember, I don't know if it was my idea, but we decided we was gonna do a little meal for her and yeah, we worked together on it, didn't we? We Dad? worked together on it? Yeah. And it was just like, it's very old woman when yeah. you were about eight years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only eight or nine. It was very memorable. Been mature since you've been young. I don't know how it worked. Oh, together. we went to like, the shops together. together. We organised the menu together. I remember making yes. ice cream. We made like milk we chocolate make cheap ice cream. Yeah, at Lambourne Road, yeah. Detail. Yeah, I remember because it was the first time I was like, we're making ice cream, wow. Yeah, I must say that we might come to it eventually, but one of the things I did believe, and I learnt this from somebody who I kind of learnt parenting of, mm -hmm. how to treat your children in a mature way. Mm -hmm. And it was always my intention to do that with my children, yeah. not to baby them. Mm -hmm. Maturity was always the aim, I mean, not to make you infantile by treating you. Yeah, not treating us too young. Mm. And helping us reach maturity rather than babying us. Yes, it makes sense. Right. And I think that has actually rubbed off even in our parenting. Um, because I remember you saying to us, you don't want a baby, Hezzy, when he was first born. You want to kind of 
aim him towards becoming an adult, that's what he's trying to be, and we definitely remembered that. Um, but to bring the conversation right back to where I wanted to start originally was, of course, you're a father, you've got four children, but what was your experience, I'm going to say, it might sound a bit weird, but of having a father, so your experience of fatherhood as a child, has that affected what you've thought you wanted to become as a father? I think so. It's a little bit hard to disentangle it from what was a very strong strand of influence in my life, which was my understanding of the Christian faith. But certainly my dad was two things. He was a hard-working man, mm. always working. Um, that was a consistent thing. He would, reg he would be at work. It was, it was at work. And the second thing was, was strong discipline. Mm. Very, those two things. Mm. Very strong discipline. And obviously, so the Keep. viewers can know, Grandad obviously was born in Jamaica and he didn't mm. come to England until he was a grown Until about 28 years old or so. Yeah, and as the story goes from what I remember and have been told, Grandad came here from Jamaica with just one suitcase. That's right. Didn't know where he was going to live. Well, he he um, where he did go was I remember him saying he had his suitcase and he had something that was just like about a hundred pounds or whatever it might have been a small amount of money, and he went and sat on the doorstep waiting for a relation to come back home from work and um, that's how he started to stay here in this country. Wow, and he just worked pretty worked much every day of his yeah, life. Yeah, he worked pretty much every day of his life, but he always had an ambition. He was my dad always had a love of property okay. when he came to this country, um, and that turned out to be. A an immensely thing. tremendous thing. Yeah, for, for you, Which for him like, and the family. Yes, indeed. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. So I'm guessing seeing your dad just constantly working, constantly working, that for you then set up, okay, well, this is what a father does, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I guess also from what you said at the beginning, your faith has formed what your thoughts of fatherhood were going to yes. be. As yes. far as we know, Grandad wasn't quite in the same standing as you, as you regarding the faith, but we don't know because obviously Grandad passed I'd away. I'd say my dad was a God-fearer. A God-fearing man. Yes, a God-fearing man. I remember hearing him say that himself. I remember the time when Grandad came to church with us because Eleanor went and actually got his shoes and put them by the door, or by his feet actually. I was like, Grandad, put on your shoes, you're coming to church with us. And in his last days, um, I remember him in the hospital, he had his Bible with him. And I actually remember, I don't know if it was myself reading it or you, I can't remember, was sitting next to Grandad in the hospital bed reading Bible passage to him. I actually remember that. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, he was a good fearing man. Is how you would sum yeah, it up. It is. It is. You know, he comes from Jamaica, which is which is a kind of cult. You know, kind of Christian culture. Yeah. A lot of church going anywhere goes in that country. And yeah. um, he would practice, always practice saying grace before his food, which mm. is giving God thanks for his food. Mm. Um, that was his background. Yeah. So that's what he knew and how he lived. So that obviously set an example for you. Um, and seeing him live out what he believed in his life to be the right way of being as a father, how then did you carry any sort of thoughts from how your dad was into your expectations of becoming a father once your mum got married? Or would you say you thought, I'm going to do everything completely different? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. I think I had a very clear template which was formed by the influence of my dad, certainly. But also, it was my understanding was highly informed by what I was learning on my Christian faith and what I was reading in the Bible. Okay. And that amounted to a man being a leader mm -hmm. in his house and being responsible for his household. Yeah. Now, I, I think that's got to be understood correctly. I understood that to mean that it, you would go forward in your house with your wife, cooperatively. Mm. But in the end, it would be the man who is held responsible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for what takes place. Yeah. And I guess, like, these days, society kind of tries to make it that the responsibility of the home is spread between the father and the mother. But I think the way that, well, Tim and I try and do it anyway, <laughs> I must think, Lord, you know what? I'm glad that the responsibility of the kids is not going to fully end up being on my shoulders at the end of time because it's down to him as a father how they turn out in a way and he's got to stand before the Lord and say this is what I did in my home and these are the reasons why I did it so as much as in our house people might see me doing maybe a lot of the manual work Tim does a lot of the how would you put it not the spiritual work but the 
building their characters and taking the time to really direct the children as to you know this is how you need to be as a person not saying that I don't try but I know a lot of that responsibility falls on him and to be honest I have to put my hands up and say I'm glad it doesn't it's not on my shoulders but you had that weight growing up I mean bringing us up as a father yeah and I didn't I didn't feel it to be a way I, I, I felt that the understanding that I had from the scriptures informed me very well as to how to go about it. I had a clear ideas as to how to go about it and what to do. Mm. And so it was never a burden. I felt that the scriptures themselves had informed me as to how to choose my wife. Mm. And I think I did I think with that information and that guidance I did very well. You chose well. Huh? I chose well. <laughs> Definitely chose well because otherwise you wouldn't have created me. So there um, we go. I felt, <laughs> I, felt um, I felt, I was just thinking about this other day and I was talking to my mum about it. I felt like when we had our first child, I felt, right, we've done this now. And I'm completely confident going forward because I know that mum mm. was going to be excellent yeah, yeah. in was, bringing, husband, yes, in bringing is. Andre up. <laughs> mm -hmm. I felt fully ready and prepared. I was very confident <laughs> about yeah. what I was doing when I was, um, you know, when... When I was younger, and when I was having when I was having you all, and yeah. how things could, would, should go. And it's really funny because you use that word confidence. You were confident in bringing in what you was going into and what you was gonna plan to do and then f fulfill. Mm. And you do hear. I mean, a lot of people these days, it's like they're sometimes less nervous about having children, but more nervous about maybe getting married to someone. Which I kind of feel like, right, that's like I don't know if that's. I wouldn't say the wrong way around, but both things are a massive deal. But um, yeah, bringing up a child or bringing a child into the world, it's, it is a massive thing. But for you to be able to go into it in confident, feeling confident. I was confident. Now, some people might say that confidence was born out of naivety, naivete mm -hmm. in face of what the task was. Mm -hmm. But no, I was confident because I felt... I was very well informed from the teaching of the scriptures mm. as to how to go about the task. Mm. I can give an example of when we felt we just had guidance forward. I'll jump forward a bit because this is to our fourth child, who was, which is Eleanor. Eleanor, uh, after she was born, was diagnosed with um, Down syndrome, which was which came as a shock and a challenge to us. Previously, with our previous three children, we had decided to homeschool them. And when we came to face the situation with Eleanor, we thought, well, what's the way forward and what are we going to do? Mm. But we were able to take confidence in this, in, in that we believed that God knew what he was doing when he gave us this child and said, I'm going to put this child in this home with you. Mm. I knew she was coming. This wasn't a surprise. You have told us how to bring up children. Mm. So what applies with... Uh, your so-called three normal children, mm. it's going to apply mm. with Eleanor too. Mm. And when we kind of um, uh, focused on that understanding, we felt, cool, fine, we're sorted, we know what to do. Mm. We carry on with her just like the others. Yeah. Actually, she doesn't have to go into like special measures and a special school and mm -hmm. something completely different. No. Mm -hmm. The insight that you gave to regarding bring up your children yeah. applies here right here, well. we just had great confidence given to us that, okay, this was a different challenge, but we still are going to go forward on the basis of what we understand mm -hmm. from the scriptures, how to bring up a child. And we applied our same approach to Eleanor as we did all the others. And we just felt confident that we we're in the right place and we knew what to do mm -hmm. and we went forward. Yeah. And we may get to it again. I don't want to keep jumping forward, but it's fine. Uh, no regrets. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So you had this confidence then once you actually were a father and you're experiencing different things different challenges coming up you know how did you feel within that like what was your actual experience of being a father with all the ups and downs and the different children now different like i know i was moody as heck like growing up i was the moody one in the house well you know what i'm facing one big challenge before <laughs> you gave me a run for my money boy yes. the one set on stage but it's all good it's all part of it no I think it's fantastic, it was wonderful. Um, <laughs> I can only recommend being a father, but I think the reason why I would recommend it is because we were so certain about what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Again, it comes back to, we believed we had the understanding from the creator of men as to how to bring up men. Mm -hmm. We felt we had that. We felt like we knew what to do. Yeah. 
Um, and a big part of what we did with our children was hi, mum and I, mm. we decided to homeschool our children. Yeah. And for, uh, for us, it was a wonderful experience because we worked with our children at home. We had our children at home with us and we, we enjoyed them maximal mm. as they were growing up. And we, you know, there was lots of debate about this homeschooling thing and this Christian education. But just from the point of view of, OK, you've had this child, you have time with them. Mm. You're with them. Yes. You can enjoy them. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't anybody want to do it just from that? Mm -hmm. And now there's all kinds of reasons why people don't want to get into the homeschooling thing and the Christian education thing. But we, we just, Hyacinth and I would just, Mum and I would just look at one another and think, this is, why wouldn't anybody want to do this? Mm -hmm. We have our children with us all the yes. time. We enjoy them from morning till night. We were never amongst that camp of people who look, you know, they send their children to school and when it's school holidays, they think, you know, and have to have the children as well. yeah, yeah. That, we don't understand. Yes. We don't understand that. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed our children from beginning to, mm -hmm. and we're still enjoying them now. Mm. No, they, we're today. still blessed with them. <laughs> you know? Now, uh, that's not to say there were times when, you know, our children, not always complying, mm -hmm. uh, there's issues to deal with, and um, we had those, but if I started going into those, that might put people off, and I don't want to put, put people off. Because mm -hmm. that's just the part of trying to bring your children to maturity, and you have to face those times. Mm. But um, you keep going. You keep going, and uh, we enjoyed. The experience of fatherhood has been great, and is still great. Mm. And um, I have no. So I know that you've asked me once or twice before, do I have any regrets? Would I do anything differently? I honestly can't think that we would do things differently. If we had more money, mm -hmm. would we have put you in a Christian school? We probably may well have done thinking yeah. that we would be accessing expertise. Because I was going to ask, when you touched on you and mum making the decision to homeschool, because I guess before you had that idea, you was obviously, were you being a taxi driver at that point or was you still a teacher? You was no. a taxi driver, you, you did taxi driving from when I was two, right? Uh, I started driving my taxi in 19, I got my badge in 1988, started doing it full time in 1989 yeah. and you were born in 87. 87. Yeah, so when, when I was two, moved out the flat, Lamborn Road, I think you kind of started then. Yeah, so but you would be about it. Because if you hadn't decided to do that, I guess maybe mum might have gone back to catering or something. I guess you had to then make these decisions, okay, we're going to be a one income family. That's a big deal for people. We're literally at the point thinking, it's come towards the end of the year, mm. and mum and I were just thinking, Ma, you, could, you, you, you might be able to go back and do work, some work, yeah. you know, and we can have that just that bit more mm. income. But just literally in that point, over the going from one year to another year, the idea okay. of homeschooling and Christian Christian education is the yes. idea that came up first of all. And we thank we thought on it and it seemed to us to be the teaching of the scriptures and we both were individually convicted about that. Yeah. Which is important. Mm -hmm. Because you're this, both in it This together. is not me saying, sit up, this is going to be a good idea, this is what we're going to do. Here's no. responsibility on you. <laughs> yeah, responsibility. No, mum came to her conviction independent of me. Mm. And um, so, no, one income was yeah. going to be it. Well, yeah, I guess in you saying that, what you're really saying is that basically you have your convictions and you now set a goal and you have to sacrifice whatever it is you have to sacrifice in order to reach that goal, because that's what's most important, especially if it comes down to your children, because at the end of the day, on your dying bed, you're, on your deathbed, you're not, sorry to be morbid, but you're not going to be like, oh, do you know what, I wish I'd painted the kitchen white, or I wish the house had been bigger. You're going to be concerned with the people that you lived your life with and those that you loved. Did I put my best efforts into them? You know, and, you know, times when I go into our kitchen at home, it might not be exactly the way I want it to be, and if I was working and Tim was working, Maybe we'd have more income, but the sacrifices we are making for our children, much like you and Mum made, it's for a better, better goal. You know. And you I mean? know, we and we never felt like we were making sacrifices. We felt like we had the ammunition to really go and do the <laughs> the, the good thing for our children and with our children. Yeah. So I don't know. 
we don't even, we didn't even look upon it. Mm. And things that might have been obstacles, we never saw them as obstacles. We just felt, okay, okay, we might be restricted in that area, but that's, we believed that God said bring your children up in a certain way and you do it according to the resources that you have. We weren't looking over and thinking, well, we could have done it a bit better, or we could have got this set of books better, or something like that. Mm. You do it according to the resources you have. That is crazy, because often you hear people say, oh, well, with kids, there's no manual. And yes, technically, there's no manual, mm. but so many times you've referred to, I felt confident because I had the scriptures. The scriptures sets out what to do, how to do it, you know. That was your manual. It was, it was, it was. I, and I feel, I mean, I've, I remember talking to a lady in taxi once, and she, she had young children. Man, I don't know. I, I, I don't. It wasn't really arrogance, but I just wanted her to be able to tell her. I have your. I know where the answers are. Mm. I have the answers. We need time. We can talk. Yeah. I can tell you what to do. Yeah. Honestly, but it wasn't that arrogance. I just felt like people who haven't had the privilege of being exposed to the scriptures and what the scriptures teach, they are just trying to go forward. Blindly, mm. they don't know. They haven't. Nobody has really said, "Here is a way, and you can walk in this way, and you can know what to do." Mm. Some now, some people might say, "We don't agree with that." Well, you can do things, mm. you know, and the insights it gives you. Well, if, but it's a way. Yeah. And we, as far as mum and I can see, as far as I can see, with what I've seen so far, mm. it's a way that I would walk again, and it's a way that I would recommend to other people. Mm. Yeah, I would. definitely so. I would. Mm. I would. Now, I would just say, of course, as time goes on in life, it's not to say that it tensions with regard to myself and Christian understanding of faith don't develop. Yeah, I think everybody does develop those tensions, but sorry, go on. Tensions can be there, and you know, sometimes you get a tension that can perhaps even be a snap sometimes. Mm. But the, the position that I'm in right now, if there's going to be a tension, it means there is a relationship still. Yes. Yep. But in order for there to be a tension, mm -hmm. there's got to be one strand, it's got to be connected at either end, so yes. there's a connection. Uh -huh. And sometimes it gets really, really mm -hmm. taut. Mm -hmm. But I think the position that I'm in is that the tension is there and I think in more traditional Christian language people might say God will not let you go. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I necessarily use that language. I've but got to understand what you mean. I think, yeah, and I don't, I don't really want to be let go but there's things that I can't reconcile. Mm -hmm. It's tension. Yeah, that, that's very honest of you and I remember, especially maybe when I'm kind of ninth year of age and stuff like moving forward I used to hear things and things would play on my mind there was just quite a period of time I remember I'd come into your mum come into you in mum's room late at night and say oh this is on my mind or this is worrying me growing up as your body's changing you start feeling different things I remember being confused about certain things and kind of talking to you guys and I would worry a lot but something that you said that always helped me was darling as long as you feel a concern about the matter you don't have to worry about it because that shows you that in your heart you were still convicted to know right from wrong and you're still trying to make your heart and your mind you know cling to the to the right thing so much like you're saying you know as long as there is a tension you know you know you don't want to be let go so it's, I guess it's like saying I know God has still got me even if I'm worried about something maybe I feel like I've done something wrong but I know what is right and I'm still trying to get onto the right path or stay on the right path. And I think that is such an important thing to portray to people because life isn't perfect, is it? The Christian walk isn't perfect. And I'm sure your experience of fatherhood as much as, you know, you wouldn't change anything. It hasn't been perfect, I guess. In relation to me and the hardships I've put you through, because <laughs> as a mother now, I imagine my children turning around and saying, Mum, I've done this, Dad, I've done this, whatever, whatever. Your heart must drop at certain times. How do you pull yourself out of the disappointment from sometimes when your children have, you know, gone and done something stupid? How do you pull yourself out of that disappointment and not despair and not go like, oh, everything I've put into you, I'll throw it all away now. Go and do whatever you want to do. Well, you know you say that your children might give you trouble. But 
I don't know. I think God has blessed me because I sought to bring them up in the way they should go. And I think they went that way. Mm. I think they did. Um, I don't know if you want me to... You can talk. You're afraid to just talk. I, like I said, I was very confident. I knew, I believed I knew things about what to do in, in, in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I had like what I felt like were clear stakes in the ground, unmovable positions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Andre, and, uh, I might get to Andre, but you're here so I can talk about you, challenged me on those. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I felt that headship that I believed fell upon me in the family was being challenged and that my word had to go and you challenged it mm -hmm. and I thought am I gonna hold to what I th am I gonna resist your challenging of me and to what extent am I gonna resist it mm -hmm. And sweetheart, I couldn't see you being exposed to what I thought would be danger. Mm. So I felt like I compromised my position mm -hmm. as the leader just to not to have to bear the pain of what I of any danger that I thought you might get into. I've been I've been speaking a bit generally, but I'm really talking about my lovely daughter. <laughs> the running she put me through. Now, what I was talking about, you know, I mentioned earlier on about the confidence I had in what I was doing, and the idea that um, I was to be a leader in the house, and you know, when when I spoke, then certain things had to be a certain way. And there came a point where we were just, you and I, sweetheart, mm -hmm. were just not on the same page regarding. Um, your relationship with mm -hmm. with T here, and um, I thought if you couldn't, I thought if you couldn't comply with what I was saying, yeah. then you couldn't live. We couldn't live together in the mm -hmm. same house. Mm -hmm. And I came to the point where, um, you know, I literally I was saying to you, you're gonna have to take your things. You're gonna have to mm -hmm. go. And I literally remember that evening. I was sitting and thinking, looking over, what kind of person I knew you to be. Mm -hmm trying to come at it, at, at it from different angles, but people hearing that I put my daughter out, people were saying, what, you put Ella up? For what reason? What you did give me a choice though. You basically said, to clarify, it wasn't just, just go because I've had enough. It was, if you want to live under this house, under this roof, this is how you have to live. Otherwise, if you don't want to apply by these, you know, live by these rules, then your option is to leave. I was at that position mm. and I thought, okay, okay Clive, so now, you're gonna yield up one of those stakes, mm -hmm. which was which was I thought important. Mm. I didn't feel like I could sacrifice you, mm. holding to this kind of principle, this idea that I had, and for me, it was really difficult because I felt like I was departing from something I knew to be a strong foundation. Yes, of course. Because I couldn't bear the pain. Mm. Which, when you look at it, you're like, well, if you have to bear the pain of something to stick to your beliefs and morals then that's really how you'd think it would have to go yeah but I couldn't I could I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't do it but I remember that night because to be honest as much as you say that it was on my heart and mind I had the verse that says honor and obey your mother and father so that things will go well with you hence why I always came back and told you you and mum oh I've been seen to Tim behind your back oh this has happened that has happened because I knew that I had to be honest with you. And as much as I tried to go on with my badness, thinking I'm my own person, it, will, it weighed on my heart. I couldn't go back. I knew that I couldn't eventually get married in the future to whoever it was going to be, whether it was going to be Tim or somebody else, as much as I wanted it to be Tim. I couldn't walk down the aisle, you guys thinking I was a certain person when I wasn't that person. And I went up to my room that night when we'd had a conversation all day, right into the evening time. And you said, you know, you went and sat on the sofa and these things were going and you threw your mind. I went up to my room and as much as I packed my bags and put them by the door, I knelt down against my bed and I prayed and I said, Lord, if you want me to be with this boy, I know you don't want me to disobey my parents in order to be with him. So I knew, because my brother had said to me, 
Sis, don't leave tonight, leave sleep on it. I knew the next morning I was coming down to say, okay, mum and dad, I'm staying. Do you know what I mean? I knew that's what I was coming down to say because... Well, you <laughs> played it for real well, because I, <laughs> I never had any sense. I wasn't trying to play you, I, I wasn't. thought you were going out the door. <laughs> oh, dear. I thought you were going out the door and um, I couldn't bear that. Yeah. So, at that point, I think probably right there, in that moment, what began to happen with me and my Christian faith was the certainty that I had in it began to waver. To waver. I think the ground mm. under my feet began to shift a little. Mm. So just that was probably kind of starting of it. Mm -hmm. Things began to shift a little. Mm. My certainty was beginning to go a bit about how you stand by. Mm. To what extent do you stand by what you think you believe? Mm. Will you suffer? What will you? What will you? Are you uh, will you sacrifice people? Yeah. Because it's asking. I felt like it was asking me to sacrifice you. Yeah. And I wasn't really willing to do that. So now I prioritise the person over almost God yeah. himself. And I felt like. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I felt like could you mm. prioritise your daughter over? over the creator of the world. So this is the starting of the problem. Then there was another thing that happened was <laughs> at home we like to, before we go to church on Sunday, we did like to get together and you know have a bit of breakfast and perhaps have a Bible reading and what have you. And my son Andre would not get up oh. and come down and be with us like the way we want him to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, in comparison to all that we went through with you, mm -hmm. it seemed like a bit trivial, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but oh, I thought... Boy, it... I'd rocked my mum and dad's face. Pardon, pardon? <laughs> I said, wow, I rocked your faith. But yeah, anyway, carry on. Um, um, I don't know if you so much rocked the faith, but you set up a different... I had to develop a different relationship with it. Mm -hmm. Perhaps recognise... I might come back to it later. We might come back to it later. Yeah. But anyway, with on... again with Andre, I felt like he was challenging mm -hmm. my word mm -hmm. and my authority that I was supposed to carry in the house yeah and and but then my response was going to be well you either listen to me or you go mm. but I thought really Clive really I would have thought that he won't come downstairs before you go to church mm -hmm. look at look at your son Andre look at the kind of guy that he is mm. look at the young man that he is are you really going to put him out over something like this mm. and then so this in this age, you know, it, so you, what, you would be, you would have been, I don't know. Uh, 18? What, was he was as old as 18 then? I think. Yeah. I would. And Andre would have been a bit older? Yeah. Andre would have been 21, I think. Oh, well, maybe, yeah, I think I got 18, 17, 18. But it, it was so, I felt like I had this strong sense that you must lead in the house. Mm. Father must lead in the house. And what he says, you must have authority there. Yeah. Children must recognise that authority. And if you don't have it... It's the beginning of the downfall of society. I don't know, I was old, I was 19, because then it was two years that we was actually together after that conversation with me that you'd allowed then Tim to start coming to the house and for me to start seeing him in groups. So we were together for two years before we got married, before we got engaged and then got married. And I got married when I was 21. But it's crazy, Dad, because some people would look at that and be like, wow, that is, that's harsh. But your convictions are your convictions. And so many times people live against their convictions because they want to make somebody happy. And that is, that's the dangerous path. But I think the difference here is that, well, I know in my situation, I was seeking the Lord. And I was, like I said, I knew there's certain things I can't do because God would not ask me to do this. Because my first port of call, when I'm growing up as a woman, you're my authority, you're my father, you're my authority. So therefore, I'm under you and I have to respect that. And, you know, I don't know how many young girls these days, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, in the comments, <laughs> would respect their father if their father's around in that way. You know, they want to be their own person. But a lot of guidance, a lot of wisdom, a lot of protection comes from your father. They've gone before you, they know what the world is like. No, I just want to come in behind you with what you're saying. Um... When you, I think, when you take on marriage, you have got, you've got, to, you've got to be mature. I think you have to come to it with an idea of what it is you are doing and how you're going to do it. Mm. And 
I think you want a strong sense of that family where the man is taking the responsibility that there's a covering for the woman and mm -hmm. she can be a woman but she's within within a certain context of mm. care and love of her husband and mm -hmm. knowing that there is somebody who will sacrifice for her um, and enable her to flourish and it's sounding like from what you said that you were able to do that but you got to have so the, what I really what I really wanted to say the, the guy is pivotal mm -hmm. in this because yeah. His understandings and the way he approaches another woman, the woman that he selects, he's yeah. setting this all out, he's setting this whole framework out. Yeah. And I felt like I did it according to my understanding of what the scriptures were. Yeah. I think I wouldn't change that. Yeah, and I think and I hope you would see some evidence of the fact that when I moved from your authority to Tim's authority, the relationship that we set up, I mean, even the thing of the honesty that I've always wanted to have between us guys, I've been able to carry that into my relationship with my husband. And I've then looked at him as an authoritative figure in my life, the same way I looked at you. And I think that's a healthy way for it to happen. And I think in all this that we've discussed today, you know, around you as a father, the different ups and downs that my dad's been through, being a father, his expectations, would he change anything? You know, I'm hoping it struck a chord with people that are watching um, anyone who feels like they can relate, I hope it, you know, encourages you that building relationship obviously is important. Men taking on their role and taking it seriously is majorly important, isn't it? And I would hope any men, any young men out there watching would look at my dad as a role model because he's a wonderful, fantastic man and no, he's not perfect. I don't think any man out there is perfect, but Something that's key is that he's kept going. And I'm sure there's times when he's wanted to give up. There's times when I'm sure he's need, maybe even tried to give up. But he's still here. He's still here. And that is testimony to the fact of you keep going and you keep achieving. And you try your best and you let God do the rest. Because, to be honest, I think that's what true faith is. So as much as there are tensions, as much as there are maybe times when, as a father, you may be what's the word, kind of challenged. The ground might feel like it's shifting, might feel shaky. You keep going, you hold on to truth, you try your best and you let I think the scriptures, do the, the scriptures give you wisdom beyond your years. Yeah. Well, okay. thank you for all the wisdom that you've imparted to us, Dad. Complete pleasure, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Complete pleasure. I love you. I love you too as well, sir. Mm -hmm. Immensely. Mm -hmm. Immensely. It's, it's been nice to talk with you. So you think you were right? Bring it on, bring it on, prove me wrong.